today we're going to be working on a very common problem of pretty much all Land Cruisers. It's not just the 80 series. I find this issue on the 100 series as well, but rust coming up underneath the back glass. If you've owned an 80 or any type of Land Cruiser for that instance, it's a pretty common problem. You'll start seeing the uh, paint bubble up underneath in this rust line. So we're going to fix that today. All right, so things needed for this repair. Um, first thing is we're going to need a new weather seal. This truck is 25 years old. I'm not gonna take the chance of trying to pop the glass out and the, uh, keeping the old seal intact. So I'm already planning on pretty much just cutting that and taking that off. So this is a new seal. Picked this up from Toyota. That's the part number for it. And from Toyota, it was about $143. The next thing that we're gonna need is series of uh, sandpaper. I have everything from 80 grit all the way to 220 grit on here to get take care of the rust. And once the rust is taken care of and removed, we're actually going to prime the area with Sika Primer 207. This is a pinch weld and window primer. Um, little bottle, you can order this on Amazon. I think it was about 30 bucks. And it also comes with these cotton swabs right here to apply them with. After that, um, we're going to be using just some touch-up paint in the places that I need to. We'll probably use the brush in this, and then I'll also use one of these foam brushes just to kind of dab it on. Um, and the tape is to tape around the weather stripping before I cut it off, so that way I know how far out the weather seal comes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the cover for the third brake light. And we're going to pop this uh, panel down as well. As you can see, I've actually got LED lights installed in the back of my panel here, so just one little extra step for me. Pop these off quick, just like that. And these are held on with these push clips. So once you take the two screws out for the panel, for the, um, the handle, it just comes out. And then you grab the bottom edge and you pry down on it and they'll pop these out of the metal tailgate. Now with that set aside, the third brake light comes down. It's got two little push pins on the back side here. And all you have to do is press in on the center of those, on both of them, it'll push the centers up and then that will release the clip and you can wiggle it down. So those pins are located right here and right here. And all I'm gonna do is use a little bit, it's about like that. And we're going to set this in the center and slightly press up on it. And it'll go to one detent and you'll see how it's just slightly recessed now. Just like that. Once it's like that, you should be able to just pull straight down on it. Those clips will come out. And as you can see, there's three more metal clips that feed up into the holes on the back side of here. So once you pry those pins out from here, you're going to pull the cover and kind of rotate it out and straight back this way. All right, to take the third brake light down now, now that the cover's off, we're going to use an 8mm socket. And we're going to run 
these three bolts out. And then the third brake light should go this way towards the bottom of the upper tailgate. Just like that. And it's got a connector right here. You push in on the center tab. Sometimes they're a pain. This one's going to be a pain. You can grab a screwdriver. So we're going to go in between the middle tab and the housing and just pry down slightly and pull it to the side and it's off. Because this is a roped in style seal on the rear glass, I'm actually going to take this metal bracket off as well. And those appear to be 10 millimeter um, hex head bolts. take this loose right here and this is for the defroster it is a little plug it just slides right off that spade terminal right there and there is another one on this side right here and to get it off you just kind of wiggle it back and forth and pull just like that all right so once everything's removed off the inside we've got the third brake light off in the bracket lower panel we're and our glass is disconnected. We're going to close the tailgate again and we're going to have to take the spoiler loose if you have one and we're going to have to take the rear windshield wiper off and that the cap just pulls back like this. It's a 10 millimeter nut and we'll go ahead and take that off. And this one I actually like to do by hand only because if it's stripped I'd like to know it before I put a power tool on and break the entire shaft off because if you break the shaft off it's part of the motor and it gets kind of expensive so I'm going to do this by hand. Now to remove it this one should come off pretty simply or pretty easily because I've actually replaced this tailgate before um, but in order to take it off if it's really stuck on there what you're going to do is you're going to pull your wiper blade back like this and you're going to kind of wiggle it back and forth and break it loose off the splines. If it doesn't come loose, which this one's not, so it's actually frozen on there pretty good, I'm going to show you guys a trick for that. Okay, to get this out, since it's kind of fighting me, we're going to use some PV blaster and we're going to give it a little squirt. like that and a little on the back side just like that and typically what I use is a pair of slip joint pliers and I'll hook it on the back side here and the other part on the nut but because this one's so much smaller I can't really get in there so what I'm going to use is a pair of 90 degree needle nose and I'm going to wiggle it back in there and I'm actually gonna pry this way. So I'm gonna pry the tips towards the center, just like that, and it popped. I'm gonna kind of push it back in, and then again, turn it to a 90 degree and pull it off. And we'll clean this up with a wire brush and put the nut back on, that way everything stays intact. Next step is we're going to take the upper spoiler off. Um, again, be careful with these screws. Um, they like to rust up in, be, in behind 
um, in the plastic, uh, the housings here, they've got little metal nuts in there, or zinc plated nuts in there, and these are just regular metal bolts. And as they go into them, and they sit over time, and that water builds up in there, they like to rust and seize. So um, again, this tailgate is fairly new, um, fairly new by like three years old. Um, so I've already taken these in and out once or twice before, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in a minute because you'll see some paint that I've, I've touched up some rust before on this on this tailgate. But either way, you just take these screws out. They've got little conical washers on them. Just like that. If you can make those out. And that's kind of what centers that um, spoiler onto that bracket. Now I have a backup camera going to mine so I can't completely remove it. So I'm just gonna set mine up on top. I'll probably actually stick it up on top of the rack so that way I have enough clearance. Apologize for that guys. I didn't realize that I didn't have the camera focused up on the uh, spoiler. So these are the brackets that I'm talking about. Um, the screws go through these holes right here and there's nuts that are basically captured inside there and they like to rust up and seize the screws. So sometimes a little shot of penetrating oil like PV glass or something like that will do a good job to clear that up. This is the patch repair that I did once before. Um, basically I scrubbed down the paint or yeah, scrubbed down the paint, took the rust off because um, it was all corroded. They like to rust underneath these pads as well. So I treated and primed it, taped it all off and then basically painted it black. I wasn't really too concerned with people seeing it because it's behind a spoiler and let's be honest, it's a trail truck. So that's what we use it for. Doesn't have to be 100% pretty. Um, but because my wiring is kind of zip tied up here to this one and goes in through the main wiring harness, I can't completely remove it because um, it is a coaxial cable for, or excuse me, an RCA cable for that review camera. So all I'm gonna do is slide those zip, zip ties off and that harness off and I'm gonna set this whole thing up on top of my rack. That way I can pivot my tailgate up and down as I need to while we're trying to take the glass out. All right, so before I start cutting the glass out, the very last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the body around around the, wind, the windscreen seal or the, the back window seal here, and then I'm going to tape off that landing. That way I know exactly where the old seal sat. So when I put my pinch weld primer on, I can try to stay as close to that as possible so I don't have a huge black ring coming out around the back side of it or past the seal. Um, down here, I'm probably gonna to have to make some exception just because of that's, that's bubble up rust there. There's bubble up rust over here and a little bit through this area too. So once I get that cleaned up and pinch weld primed, those are probably gonna be the areas that I'm gonna go back over with touch up paint. I'm not gonna put touch up paint around the entire perimeter of this thing because I don't wanna waste that much paint and you're never gonna see it anyway. Um, the seal will actually grip on or bond, bond on to that pinch weld primer a heck of a lot better than it will the paint. The paint is just one more layer that could flake off. So what we're gonna do is just clean this up and I'm just gonna use an old towel and actually just use some Windex. We're just gonna go around the seal here and just clean up the body work here a little bit. That way we can get the uh, tape to stick on it nice. Be careful with these older trucks, um, being 25 years old like this, especially these white trucks or even the ever popular green trucks as you've probably seen the clear coat uh, fading off the top of them and you know having classic peel on the hoods and the uh, windshields or, or not the windshields the uh, roofs um, It tends to take the paint off if you scrub too hard. So they, I think they pretty much use a single stage paint on these trucks um, Which is probably why we have the rust issues that we do on some of them and Obviously the fading uh, this this trucks more of a chalk white than anything else and we're going to go all over this and clean this up underneath anyway. Just one, like I said, one to make sure I had a good surface to bond the tape to so that way the tape's not peeling off on me as soon as I cut the, cut the seal. Because I, I kind of like to have an idea where it's going to be at or where that line's going to be. And that should pretty much do it. Now for this part, I'm going to use 
um, one inch painters tape and again we're just going to try to get close to the seal here just try to follow the line as close as we can so it doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect but the better you can do it the better it's going to turn out all right so that is the rear window taped up. Like I said, it's not 100% perfect, especially that corner there and so on, but it pretty much gets the job done. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna take our razor blade and I'm gonna use one like this because they're nice and flexible. And I'm gonna come around this perimeter in here and we're going to cut this seal and basically peel the outside of it off and take the glass out. Stick the blade up underneath the seal. We're gonna push in, and then we're just gonna drag it. Now what's interesting about this glass right now is that I think somebody's been in here and done this before because this has actually got urethane on it and we don't typically put urethane in on a roped in seal. So that's kind of interesting. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my razor blade and I'm coming in here real close to the glass and I'm just dragging along that seal and I'm pulling back on it as I'm cutting it. Continue doing this all the way around but what I'm going to do is stop right now and give you guys a close-up of that rust spot just so you can see why we're doing this you can see all the moisture in here and then when we get to the rust spot right there so it's holding all this moisture underneath this seal and it's corroding that metal All right, with the seal cut off the outside of the perimeter of the glass, what I'm gonna do is use a piece of plastic wedge. You can get this at an auto parts store. 
Um, and I'm just going to shove it up underneath the seal and just kind of slowly work the glass out. The other way you can do this, and it's probably a safer way to do this, is to have somebody else help you kind of open the tailgate part, part way. Somebody push from the outside while somebody else catches it from the, or excuse me, somebody pushes from the inside while somebody else catches it from the outside. That way you don't risk possibly cracking it if it is like this one is glued in in one spot, it may be a little bit tighter in one area than the other. So what I'm going to do is slowly work it out. some more cutting to do because this one's blue. Really comes out. And then we're just going to grab the rest of that seal and pull it off. So this truck didn't look that bad, but as you can see, there is a lot more than what we thought we had. Looks like we have a lot more work to do. So as I mentioned before that this is actually our second tailgate. We bought this tailgate from a junkyard here in Richmond, Virginia um, because our last tailgate actually rotted out the exact same way. When I bought the truck there was a huge, and I mean huge, rust hole right about here about the size of that uh, lock cylinder right there. Um, so this really isn't as bad but it's not exactly great either. I mean as you can see it's pretty porous and it's pretty, pretty well eaten away a lot of that edge right there. Um, so I may end up running to the auto parts store and getting some type of urethane or some type of sealer. I'm not 100% certain yet, but the good news is it doesn't look like there's any holes all the way through the body yet. So we obviously need to clean all of this off. Get all this rust out of here and see what we're really working with here. Well, the good news so far, don't have any holes going through the body. So that's good news. Doesn't look the best right now, but once we get it in here and uh, get sanding, get it down to bare metal, we should be okay. The biggest thing is making sure that all this is solid. Now, because my rust is uh, so bad in these two corners here, I'm probably going to end up taking this tape off and using a grinding wheel on a little air pneumatic grinder or what we call a ziz wheel and uh, clean all these areas up. But before I take the tape off, what I'm gonna do is since my glass was bonded in, I'm gonna use a paint scraper like you get from Home, Depot's or Home Depot or Lowe's. And I'm just gonna come in here 
scrape all this stuff off. And I'm just gonna leave the, the tape on there, that way I don't scrape into the paint past all of that. As you can see, I'm getting all that sealant off of there. And we'll come back along that edge either with a piece of sandpaper or um, you can get 3M Scotch-Brite pads at the auto parts store. That works really well for taking off that sticky residue and scuffing up the paint just enough for that pinch well primer to adhere to. All right, so we're still working on the rust. Um, we got some grinding to do here, and I'll get to that here shortly. I did take a quick break, and I went and did some research because I was a little confused why this thing would have sealant on it. The original tailgate that I replaced on this vehicle, because it was rusted out um, down below the seal, didn't have any uh, urethane sealant on it. So I assumed that this glass, because it had the urethane on it, must have been a replacement glass or a replacement seal at some point in its life. Um, what I've discovered um, through my searches on I Hate Mud and the internet is that it sounds like when these vehicles started becoming equipped or coming from the factory equipped with airbags, Toyota decided to start urethaning glass into the seal and also into the body. Um, and I noticed that the factory service manual said that when I did my front windshield replacement on this vehicle as well, that they wanted urethane placed around the outer perimeter of the the windshield seal not the glass but the actual seal so um, I'm guessing based on what I'm reading from 1991 92 93 and 94 those vehicles were not equipped with airbags those vehicles were most likely installed with just a rope seal style gasket which is your standard gasket which is what I purchased um, after that when they started putting the passenger airbag and the driver's airbag into the vehicle because of the amount of the shock wave that it makes inside the passenger compartment when those two um, airbags inflate in the shockwave of the air or basically the air pocket that it sends back. I think Toyota, because of the crash standards and the crash testing that they did, they probably found that the glass in the rear and the glass in the front windshield were probably blowing out of the vehicle. So they decided to start gluing in the glass. Um, so basically that's what I've, I've kind of discovered on the internet and that's kind of what I'm putting together. All right, so we're sanding and uh, grinding here, and we're trying to get this down as close as we can to bare metal. Um, you guys can probably see how deep the pitting actually is. So what we're gonna try to do is get as much of that rust out of there as possible, and the Sika 207 primer is gonna do a pretty good job of inhibiting the rest of that rust and priming that, um, that pinch weld there so we can put the, the um, glass and the gasket back on. But we wanna get you know as much as much of this out as possible so we don't have possible rust areas coming back later on um, again we got some pretty heavy pitting so I'm using um, different grades of sandpaper a grind a little air grinder 
like this with uh, different abrasive pads. And then I'm using small stainless steel brush and a large stainless steel brush. And I'm just trying to scrub as much of that out of there as possible. Um, and then once we get that all cleaned up, we'll prep the surface um, with either alcohol or some type of acetone or something like that. Get it nice and dried up, get all the dust and that off, and then we'll start pinch bowl priming.